Finding Bigfoot has followed this team of experts as they travel the globe in search of an elusive legend. I'm Keith Hoffman, executive producer of Finding Bigfoot. Once again, I've asked Matt, Cliff, Renee, and Bobo to come in from the wild to reveal what really goes on out there. I'm ready for tigers, Renee. <laughs> to be a Bigfoot investigator kind of means that you're a pig-headed, stubborn person. Not only are their secrets revealed in the studio. If I were Renee, I'd feel like... Oh, she's like, got the hardest job. I wouldn't yeah, want her job. It's three against one. Wrong. Now, for the first time, we leave the bright lights behind and head into the dark forest. Hello, America. We make TV gold, all modesty aside. <laughs> First, we head to Florida. All right, guys, come on in. For a behind-the-scenes look at the making of an upcoming Finding Bigfoot episode. You can feel the excitement of people who want to share their stories. We'll see firsthand what goes into making the show. We're going to the exact location where they shot the Sasquatch. Then, what do hardcore squatchers do when they're not squatching? It's like begging a Bigfoot. Ow, oh, he's on me! Ow! Oh! We'll find out when we visit the Bogues in his hometown in Northern California. That's how TV star lives, dude. So join us as we discover more than ever about the quest to find Bigfoot. Hey, we didn't even go that far, and I'm lost. Cliff, do you know that snakes are yummy? Yeah, rattlesnake tastes very, very good. Tastes like chicken. <laughs> Much of the success of Finding Bigfoot is due to the team's complicated dynamic. Are you suggesting that the most probable explanation is someone dressing up as an ape stealing apples? And I thought it was time for a little group therapy. <laughs> Who has the most debates between you guys? I think it's... Yeah, we all do. I don't... I mean, yeah, we're not constant... keeping score. <laughs> yeah, we're constantly arguing with each other about something. That very well might be a Bigfoot in there. You know, we're left with a big question mark because, to me, it looks like it could just as easily be a human. To be a Bigfoot investigator kind of means that you're a pig-headed, stubborn person because you're chasing down something that everybody else says isn't even there. Right. We think we're right, and to hell with people who don't think we're right. It doesn't Amen. matter. Excuse um, me. I know I'm right. Yeah. So I'm going to chase the invisible Sasquatch right now. You are just out there in each other's faces all the time, and I'm sure you know way more about each other than you would ever really want it to know. You know, I think it's another reason why the show works. So let's just, uh, I want to go down, uh, we'll just start with Matt. What is it, what is, in one word, what do you bring to the group? Oh, God. Uh, free association. Experience. Experience. All right, what would you say Matt brings? Uh, what are you trying to do here? <laughs> <laughs> just sometimes looking at this group dynamic. I, I think Matt um, bring, oh, how about conviction? It's yes. very difficult to convince him that he's incorrect about anything. <laughs> well, no, no, that's good. Right. There's something on the hill. Are we supposed to run up that hill up there? No, we're not supposed to do this. Why is he going up there? Relentlessness. I get so burned out when we take a break. It's like I don't want to talk about it for a while. Then he goes home and he's doing it 12 hours a day when our off time. These are good things. Yeah. All right, Renee, what would you say the one word you bring? Originally, I was going to say balance, but it's also counter, so counterbalance. Counterbalance. I don't believe a, a person could have done that. So, therefore... Until I see a Sasquatch, <laughs> I'm not going to believe it's a Sasquatch. I think for me, because of the position she's put into being a skeptic, there's definitely a reality check. If something happened and she said it happens to, even if it's like against her interest and against her role, then that's usually like, okay, that really did happen. Whoa. Did you guys hear that? We almost sounded like a tree falling. Yeah, out. yeah, yeah, we did. It was so loud. It was crazy. What would you say, Renee Ricks? Aggravation. <laughs> <laughs> I can easily hit it. No question. There was never any question if someone could jog at the questions or someone could walk it. If I were Renee, I'd feel like... Oh, she's like... got the hardest job. I wouldn't yeah, want her job. Yeah, it's three against one. Wrong. I'm stoked to stay here. Let's go set up my camera. Knowing there's a Sasquatch here, this is a great place to leave Renee. I hope she gets the crap scared out of her. Yeah, I second that motion. Even though they might attack me at times or, you know, undermine or belittle me, at the end of the day, when I look at them, I still respect them all for their experiences. I can't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> what can't you believe? That she's able to do that. She forgives us for being us. Bubba, what do you bring to this group? I was always like a blue-collar guy, you know. 
So I can relate to I, I, I can relate. I relate maybe more to like some of the rural guys. You're like a man of the people? Or? Right, yeah. I know what you saw, and I can say, welcome to the club. <laughs> I'd say versatility. I he, say he knows. Flatulence. <laughs> <laughs> I could say that. Uh, for me, it, it's a little bit difficult because I've known Bobo for so long. So for me, it's really like, it's fun. You're going to eat two of those? Let the Squatch Nuts save. Squatch friend! <laughs> you are a kid at heart, which is That's an a wonderful quality, though. Like Buddha. You're bo or you're bo I'm like, I think the word you bring is Bobo. Bobo brings Bobo to the group. <laughs> yeah, unapologetically so. Yes, yes. <laughs> I do a little apologizing. You know they can get DNA off a rock. All right, Cliff, what do you bring to the group? Uh, One word. I'll hyphenate my word. So it's two oh, words. Oh, it's the teacher. Data analysis. Data analysis. Using some rough numbers at your feet here, I have a, about 17.3 inches long. Cliff is, has a tendency to really... Um, One word. Ruminate. So he thinks things over, you say. Lo and behold, there are hairs in here. I'm going to collect these. It would be silly if I didn't. I was going to say awesomeness, but then I can't say it about myself. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, just uh, sanity. Sanity. <laughs> Uh, I would say meticulousness. Yeah. Okay. If I'm moving along and I see tracks and stuff and I think they're fresh, he'll stop and document them, photograph it, and I'll be like, no, I'm, I'm looking for the thing that we want to film. So I was going to say, it sounds like so far there's like a good balance. We do a good, uh, good cop, bad cop, too, sometimes. Okay. Guess, guess which one I am. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I'm feeling just right here. A lot of fans tell me that they are curious how they really make this show, and the truth is, so am I. I decided I'm ditching the studio to see how the production crew makes an episode. I have to say, from the very first episode, I have loved the town hall meetings. We'd like to see a show of hands of those who have actually had a visual sighting. And now I get to go behind the scenes as they shoot one. There are always so many cool, interesting witnesses there. And I have some questions myself that I want to ask them. It's all going down at a small church in a rural town about 40 miles west of Tallahassee, Florida. When I got there, there was already a crowd gathered out front two hours early. You guys have a story to share with us today? Bobo was out mingling with the fans and handled the introductions. Keith Tastic is the executive producer. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? I'm Jason Cup. Hey, how you doing? A lot of the folks I met are firm Bigfoot believers and were itching to tell their stories or demonstrate their Bigfoot calls. <laughs> this is 13-year-old Nelson Singletary and his dad, Wes. Have you met anybody in the cast yet today? Um, yes, I met Bobo, Matt, and Renee. Cool. Were they what you thought they'd be like? Yes. I think they're all very nice. You know, Bobo stepped right up a minute ago, started introducing himself to everybody. And George and Tanika Shorter said they found a Sasquatch footprint. Well, it covered that long. Oh, wow. And it wasn't a bear or deer. I've seen all those kind of tracks. It wasn't nothing like that. You can actually see the toe print. Yeah, like... But what's so cool about all this is that in this setting, no one is going to laugh or make fun of what someone says they've seen. Witness Jason Cup was relieved to be here. I tell the story and nobody believes me. They laugh. So it's a funny story. I make it funny. You know what I mean when right. I tell it? But here it's serious. People believe me. Hey, go ahead, have a seat. Anyone that's not on the The crew lets the people with Bigfoot encounters in first because it takes a lot of wrangling to make sure their stories end up on TV. It's all orchestrated by this guy, Chad Hamill, who runs the show on a day-to-day -day basis. He's been on the crew since the very first Finding Bigfoot episode, with a total of 47 under his belt. You know, there's light spots and dark spots, and if someone has a story, we want to put them in these spots that we have pre-lit. All these people in this row, and all those are witnesses over there. And you don't tell them what to say or anything, you just say, do you have a story? If you have we a just story, want to put you in a different, yeah. uh, different spot. Yeah. Once the witnesses were in place, Everyone else came in and grabbed a seat. We're about to start. The last people are filing in. You can see this place is full, and you can feel the excitement of people who want to share their stories. A lot of people are going to tell their stories. They're going to talk about, you know, 
Chad gave the audience a pep talk and some pointers about taking part in a TV show. Uh, the number one thing I could stress is just to have respect. You know, if someone's telling the story, please don't talk over them. And finally, at long last, the team walked in. We're Florida. Yeah. We're and got a great reception from the fans. I want to let you guys know this is our second trip back to Florida. This is a tremendously excellent habitat for Sasquatches, which is why we keep coming back. One at a time, the witnesses got their turn in front of the mics. The dogs started growling and ran up in the woods, and they came back about 20 seconds later yelping. And I heard some walking in the woods, and it made a loud scream. When I'm sitting in that room of believers, it's powerful. It's really hard not to be captivated. You know, once you get to a certain point when you're so scared, it's like, I don't trust myself to say that that's what I thought for sure. This is compelling stuff. But it's also a critical component of the research. When the team hears firsthand about these Sasquatch sightings, it helps them narrow their search. It also helps the witnesses, who've come forward and stuck their necks out to feel good about themselves. Was it nice, like, being in a room where people believe you? Yes. Yeah. Sarah Carpenter came here with her son and nephew, who are big fans of the show. But the meeting helped shore up her own conviction that Bigfoots are real. What was it like being here? Anything surprised you tonight? It did. Um, some of the people I knew and had never heard stories where they saw anything. So one man that I've known for a long time really surprised me. Oh, wow, because it's a place people can come and, and say these things they don't tell most and people, then, right? They don't feel crazy. Once the witnesses map out exactly where they had their Bigfoot encounters, the team starts to figure out where they're going to go for their upcoming night investigation and which witnesses they want to follow. I'd say we could do that, Craig. It's visual. It's so much like Stacy's footage. It's probably the same critter. It's a big decision because what they decide here is what determines their plan for the rest of the week. After they're done planning, the only thing left to do is sign some autographs and pose for some photos with the fans. It's a small way to say thanks for watching the show and for being a strong supporter of the Squatch. Did you have fun at the Hey You Town Hall tonight? This has been a phenomenal night. I've learned a lot. And all in all, I think it's been a huge success. I can't wait for what comes next. Coming up, I head out with the cast and crew to investigate a compelling Squatch sighting. 80% of people I talk to you have no idea there's a camera crew around it. And Matt surprises me with some unusual behavior. I want to keep the bugs out of your ears. I'm on my way to Torreya State Park, an hour outside of Tallahassee, Florida, to meet up with the Bigfoot production crew. And for the first time, I'm going with the cast and the crew as they interview their first witness. If they don't believe them, it can get a little tense, so this should be interesting. We're going to the exact location where they shot the Sasquatch. We've all seen this on TV a lot, but now we're seeing the behind the scenes. For this sighting, it's a quarter mile walk to the location. Will you come in, Stacy? What's up? You see where Steve's at here? Yeah. I have you here, your dad. He's going be right here. Okay, so what they're doing now is they're talking to the witness so they can block the scene for their camera guys. Director Chad Hamill choreographs his team. His three cameramen need to know their exact position to capture all the action. Thirteen people are here shooting this scene, while another team is off-site doing advanced logistics for the next Finding Bigfoot episode. Are you putting on polarizers? Oh, team off. This could be complete mayhem, but every person on the crew has a specific job. Do you know your landing? Everyone? Yeah. Sit right here, right? Yeah. Let's speed. It's impressive to watch these experts in action. Speeding. Okay. All right, guys, come on in. For this future episode, the researchers are interviewing Stacy Brown Sr. and his son, Stacy Brown Jr. Right about here. And I'm Both men are hardcore squatchers. I'm probably out here squatching about three or four nights a week. It's an addiction. Once that little hook, once it hooks you in there, that's it. You're, you're hooked. You can't get away from it. Biggest tree way back up there. Last spring, they were deep in the woods and captured images on their heat-seeking thermal camera. All right, so start your story again, Stacy. Do you want us in a straight line or stagger? 
So I was holding the camera up like this wherever we heard the walking noise, and that's when I seen the dot up on the side of the tree. That biggest tree? The biggest tree way back up there. Stacy, you, are you referring to the tree? There, there's a felled tree, and it's the one directly behind it. What I love about this is even though there's all these people around them, it's like there's no cameras. And these guys are being investigators. They're asking them the tough questions to find out if this is real. What was going on from your perspective? You saw this I thing step out. At first, I thought it was a, a, a raccoon or something on the side of the tree. When we filmed the video, I sent it to a couple people, and Cliff was one of them. Yeah, I always respected him. He took more of a uh, scientific approach to it. If he doesn't think it's a squatch, he'll tell you. He talked me into this show because I didn't want to do it. I, I didn't want to be made a fool. I believe with all the cameras and everything that was going on around me, uh, it was like a circus. I think that I think they were able to pull my story out. I hope they do. You can't out squatch a squatch. No, no. no. I mean, we... Two hours have passed, and we're still not done. One more from the top. The crew moves on to setting up Bobo's recreation of the witness footage. I'll see where he's at and start doing. I don't think like tell him where he needs to go. That one right there. Matching up the exact spot for the recreation is so much more complicated than it looks in the finished show. 80% of people I talk to you have no idea there's a camera crew around. Are you guys ready to come over? Hey, Bobo, you're in the right spot. We good? Okay, here we go. Okay, get your Olympian on and try to clear that in less than two steps. I definitely have new respect for this process. Right and then left. Yeah. Hey, step. 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 Oh, okay. Bobo, tell me you're coming back. Yeah, I'm gonna come back. Stop. Okay, cool. Can I just see real quick before you guys go yeah. on? Check it out. Here's the original. It's, right. It steps out from behind the tree. Right. And just kind of compare the body shape and movements to Bobo doing it. Look at the hand. Yeah. There's Bobo right there. So we'll Whoa. step out in a minute. This thing Whoa. just glides and smoothly moves. Yeah, no tree offense, to tree. Bobo, but uh, that's a little more uh, graceful than you. <laughs> I think uh, Bobo takes losing well when it comes to competing against Sasquatches. <laughs> Look at that! That thing's oh, yeah. huge. Yeah. Look at that thing! I did not realize big it was shovel hats. That big. This is this this is the first time where it is noticeably larger than him on both sides of the Whoa. tree in the original well, video. It's, it's just yeah, New Mexico very is way graphically, bigger. distinctively larger because it sticks out on both sides of the tree. Mm -hmm. I know that you guys get back, but this is why you do all this hard work, right? For these kind of moments. This, well, yeah. is, yeah. this is it. This is, this is what I'm cool. waiting for. This is what I live for. Yeah. The reenactment is a success. And the crew packs up for the next scene. I head out of the woods with Renee and get the skeptic's view on witness investigations. I know sometimes you get do you get frustrated that it's not a scientific enough investigation? That is the hardest part for me. Coming here, it, it is, this is, this is a show about people having their encounters and their experiences. We're talking to the people. We're doing a rudimentary recreation. Tell me from the top of my stick when it's about the height of the thing. Well, Bobo, you feel like uh, trying to imitate some movement? So what about that height? It was about as high as the top of that branch. That's it, but... She's a pretty good squad. Yeah, not bad. We're not out here with survey equipment. We're not out here doing that top-of-the-line professional one. I mean, really, it's run it down the basics. Is it impossibly large for a person? Decide for yourself. After the witness investigation, the crew takes each team member aside to interview them about the experience. Meanwhile, I find Matt waiting his turn in a strange resting position. The production crew told me this odd behavior is a common occurrence. So I'm told by a lot of the crew that this, when you were laying down, they're like, oh, this is Matt between takes. Is this true? If we have to, like, stay up late into the night and then hours after that, it helps to try to get some rest in where you can. So can you show me this? What were you doing? Oh, like this. I just got to keep my ear off the ground so the bugs don't climb in my ear. Oh, so that's what that is. And the legs are straight, or? Yeah, usually like that. And do you sleep this way? Yeah, I'll fall asleep that way. So you can sleep with your head? Oh, yeah. Hold on. You don't want to, like I said, you want to keep the bugs out of your ear, so you got to do it that way. Here, I'll stay, stay there. Let me make sure you're doing it right. OK. OK. So this, is there a name for this? 
Uh, that's <laughs> yeah, I guess. So this is called the money maker. Yeah, I, I, I never knew what it looked like, so I wanted to see from the other side. All right. uh, I'm told by a lot of the cast and crew they get pictures of you doing this in all kinds of locations. Why do they do that? It's an unusual thing. You to know what they'll do? do you right? know what? They're so bad because even if like I'm I'm laying on the ground in Vietnam and I'm asleep and there's big gnarly spiders crawling over me, they'll come up. Do they chase the spiders away? No, they'll come up and take the pictures of the spiders crawling on me. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll have to uh, we'll have to see some of those pictures. Anyway, let's cut to montage. <laughs> Coming up, things that go bump in the night. Too squatchy out here. Finding Bigfoot is all about working and filming in complete darkness. What's going on here? I'm at him. So they gonna work, dude? How do they do it? So I'm gonna go like The cast and crew is about to go shoot their first night investigation, and I'm gonna watch them prep. I am really curious about this because, you know, when you're squatching, you can't have lights. You gotta be in total darkness. So I wanna see how they do this. This is gonna be cool. Right, let's take that first one. Who's this at? Uh, this is Matt. Matt. Is he out here? I got Renee here. Give me Cliffs as well, because Cliffs right here. When I get to the parking lot of the State Forest, I find the crew unpacking gear from a fairly large truck. So you guys, when you go from state to state, you hulk comes with us everywhere. Okay, so this is where, this is all your equipment See? in here. And it's a ton of specialized squatching gear. Each cast member has his own camera backpack adjusted for a perfect personalized fit. They are here. Cliff's always L for loser. For <laughs> uh, lovely. <laughs> nobody else shares your backpack. No, 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 no. no. I, I wouldn't like want to hygiene guys thing? to wear my, my, my backpack. <laughs> Renee's got a special pack. <laughs> she has a little diaper <laughs> thing that she rolls up in there. I'm I I'm not big and bulky, and it doesn't get tight enough. So when you're wearing these, oh, because those you do want these to be cinched up. How heavy is it? I think heavy's on. It's, it's pretty lightweight. That's the piece it broke right there. I don't see where it came from, Cliff. These packs with the long arms and super small infrared cameras are what allow us to go along with the team when they're walking through the woods in complete darkness. You see something? Yeah, it's going, it's going to the left. Right. Oh, I see it, I see it, I see it, yeah. You guys are kind of like a family here, yeah. would you say? Kinda. Yeah, totally. We, uh, Might totally be dysfunctional are, yeah. a little bit, but... Uh, All families are. If you hate your family. <laughs> <laughs> We're the same 12 people, 14 people that are going around the country, and like we've all gotten really close, and it's like, I know these guys. You should be talking to some of the other people that work behind the camera. They're cooler. Cool and smart. It takes brains and guts to make all this equipment work night after night in some not-so-ideal conditions. What's going on here? Out of that, Adam? Is that thing going to work, dude? Well, it's a McGullock at this. Yep. Like, I feel it's up here. See? That tells me that they knew the car was in there. So it has to be something to do with the, with the recording mechanism. When they started, they were skeptics, and now those guys are like, yeah, they've heard enough stuff to go, squatches yeah. are real. Well, we haven't had any action yet, but the night is young. We've only been out here for three hours. Yeah. Pretty squatchy out here, that's for sure. How squatchy? Really squat squatchy. All this is a lot of work to make it so they're not making any footprint in the middle of the night. That it's just a very quiet, okay, okay. dark. Would you grow. the camera too? Matt. Yeah. Like we switch up to a special camera. <laughs> <laughs> this is our night it's vision. cardboard. So this is uh, they're showing us the high tech camera here. Well, that so helps so it doesn't leak as much light out at night. Uh, but yeah, this is a night vision scope, so we can see in the dark. Now I'm ready. All my all my 17 layers are on. And I'm warm enough, I'm ready for Florida weather. Yeah, it's uh, getting dark, you guys. This is fun, but you gotta get to work. <laughs> We're waiting for you to leave. Okay. <laughs> I'm out. I'm going back to the hotel. <laughs> Adios. Coming up. Let's make way for the real musician here. Cliff and I try some never-before-seen <laughs> squatching techniques. Redonkulous. And I find out that solo squatching is much harder than it looks. I'll see you back at camp. Okay, I seriously don't even know which way camp is. I wasn't allowed to go on one of the big night investigations with the rest of the team, but I convinced Cliff to let me go on his solo investigation. We make TV gold, all modesty aside. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I headed deep into the woods of northern Florida to meet with Cliff and cameraman Tyler. They've chosen a spot surrounded by 80 acres of isolated woods, rumored to be especially active with Sasquatch sightings. Here I am on one of your infamous solo investigations. So, you know, if anyone watches, like, the early shows that we did, like, we didn't have nine investigations, like, the first five or six, I think. Uh, at the end of the first season, the, the production needed to give us more freedom. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways they did so is by letting one of us go out into the woods with Tyler for three days and three nights. And uh, Tyler's your buddy, right? Oh, oh, yeah. We've been friends a long time. Yep. It turns out that Tyler came through the ranks of squatching, not television. And it's been on-the-job training ever since. Tyler, you're walking around in the dark with a camera in your eye. Mm -hmm. uh, is that a hard thing to do? Uh, I, I've become accustomed to it, I guess. It's, uh, I've got used to walking backwards, and you know, sometimes I end up in the bushes or falling in a ditch, whatever. Who's the nicest to you when you fall in a ditch? Too? Uh, none of them. <laughs> <laughs> Seen you play this guitar before. Right. And there's been a lot of cases when people have been playing music out in the woods, whether on the radio or a live instrument, and Bigfoots have come in because it's all about curiosity. Right. All right. Let's make way for the real musician here. <laughs> and it just so happens I brought an instrument of my own to play. Redonkulous. I was in a marching band, so imagine having to carry this. You know, I was in a marching band too. In my high school, I what started out on bass drum. Did you? I did. See, we are kindred spirits. We really are. <laughs> All right, so what better way to get a Scotch's attention than a little guitar and a little drumming, right? Absolutely. All right. I'm not sure I can say what happened next was music to my ears or anyone else's. Oh, sorry. I'm not really keeping the beat, am I? <laughs> I wasn't a good bass drum player. I should probably tell you that now. Tyler. <laughs> the randomness of my life. <laughs> Hopeful we had made our presence known, it was time to head out and see if our experiment worked. I was excited to watch and learn from the experts. I'm going to start with knocks, escalate to whoops. Nothing's answered back to the knock. Whoop. In the darkness, it was easy for me to imagine a squatch lurking behind every tree. I'm wondering if there's like two or three in around now, just listening and checking us out. It's just a whole different kind of intimate, quiet feel. So I'm following them as they walk back to camp. They're gonna make some noise draw more squatches in and get their attention. On the way back to camp, there was still one more thing Cliff wanted me to try. All right, Keith, it is with great pleasure that I'm going to force you to put this on and experience what we do every single week. This is payback time, right? Yeah, this is our backpack camera. Um, the purpose of this, of course, is to give us, give the viewers in America um, our facial expressions as things happen in the woods. Hello, America. Okay, Keith. All right, I can't see a thing. In fact, I can't even see, am I looking at a camera? It's pitch dark. Though it looks like our infrared cameras admit light, only the cameras see it, and my eyes don't. Like, when people are watching this, I think there's so much light, but I am walking in total darkness, except for stars and moon. But you can't really describe this feeling of being in the middle of the woods, in the middle of the night. It's one of my favorite things in the entire world. I love the sounds, the smells. I love the way the darkness looks and the shadows and the silhouettes of the trees. And I love looking for something, trying to film something that everybody tells you isn't even real, but they're wrong. Mm -hmm. Hey, can I do a call? Yeah, of course. Oh! I think if there's any bassets around, we're gonna get a call back for sure. <laughs> so, I mean, I see why this is, this is addictive. Oh yeah, Bigfooting is my life. You, you... Making television is my job. 
All right, this is pretty amazing. I mean, I could stay out here all night. But I know you do have to get going, so with that, I'll see you back at camp if you can find it. Wait, I can't even... Okay, I seriously don't even know which way camp is. I think camp is this way. This is like Sunland and Blair Witch Project. Oh! Coming up, what does a hardcore squatcher do when he's not squatching? I head home with Bobo to find out and get ready to be surprised by our first stop. So this is Bobo's crib. That's how TV star lives, dude. You can't out-squatch a squatch. No, no. Perfect. Nicely done. When the Finding Bigfoot cameras stop rolling and there's a break in the action, Bobo is happy to head home. But what does a hardcore squatcher do when he's not squatching? I just love to come home and chill and hang with Monkey and throw the ball and walk on the beach and go to the woods and see my friends. Everybody knows Bobo as a squatcher and as the top stand-in for Bigfoot. <coughs> but I have a feeling there's a lot more to Bobo than that. So I've come to Northern California to find out. I caught up with him and his dog Monkey on the beach, just chilling as Bobo would say. Uh, I wasn't too stoked. They said we got a film. Like, okay, during your break, you're going to spend a week with a film crew. I was like, what kind of break is that? They're like, oh, yeah, Keith's coming out. So then I laughed, because me and Keith are good amigos. I found out that Bobo lives in Humboldt County, a quiet, laid-back community on the Pacific Coast, some 200 miles north of San Francisco. A senior year of high school, me and my buddies came up, checked it out. Uh, checked out the surf, checked out the scene, just dug it. I was like, yep, yeah, i got to move up here. For anyone who knows Bobo, this should come as no surprise. Pretty small for a Squatch monkey. In fact, this is one of the Squatchiest places in America. All around for Squatching and surfing, this is the best spot. This spot is Bobo's world, a little slice of paradise he calls home. I think a lot of people are curious how Bobo lives when he's off the road. And I get the unique privilege of getting a tour of Bobo's bachelor pad. Welcome to the abode, Keith. So this is Bobo's crib. This is how TV star lives, dude. <laughs> Squalor. Like, I don't like people coming in my pad, but Keith's a good bro, so I didn't mind him coming in, just showing him some stuff. You know, it's kind of what I thought. Pretty bachelory. It's very Bobo-ish. Yeah, it's kind of thrash. I didn't get a chance to clean up yet since I got back from my trip. I just kind of dumped all my stuff there. When I walked into Bobo's house, I saw three things. There was stuff, more stuff, and even more stuff. There was also an odd smell. But my house is definitely getting cluttered from all the stuff I'm picking up on the road. How often are you here in this house in a year? Like this last year. Six weeks. I'm never here. But they say a man's home is his castle. So I was eager to get the grand tour. That's one of the Bigfoot conference room yams put on. That's my good bro, Bad Bill. Used to be in a band with him. The tusks I got, we were pig hunting over in Kauai. It's me as a baby. baby. Then I got these. This is my hero award. Oh, shit, Keith. <laughs> it's a little cluttered in this house. This is probably my most prized possession by Boondi Stick I got in Australia. And this is how you hold it? They throw it at kangaroos. You throw it, and wound it, and run over, pick it up. Then you club them and stab them in the heart. Let's put that back uh, over there. This is where I come home from traveling. I just dump everything in here. All right, so I'd say this like represents Bobo's life probably more than anything. I guess I wasn't surprised, but there was a lot of Bigfoot paraphernalia. This guy is really into it. Uh, Wait, we got more casts over here. I got a bunch of casts. Bigfoot fly swatter. All the fans love all the hats you wear. That's... This is the OG gone squatching hat. What is the OG gone squatching? The original one. I used yeah. to send, uh, I used to, when I'd sign emails and stuff, I'd sign them gone squatching when I was leaving, like if you couldn't get a hold of me for a long time. So when I'd write to you guys at the offices, I'd write gone squatching Bobo. So this is kind of one of your least cluttered areas. This is your kitchen. I'm guessing you don't cook a lot. Cook a lot of crab dinners. Got a Kepi Gooley original painting up here with Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot. Now, do you believe in the Loch Ness Monster? Dude, they're a biological fact, like the squash. Like, those are the two things that are real that aren't known. So you believe that, but not mermaids? No. No. This wall of photos gives me the most personal glimpse into Bobo's life. It just shows this is your dad. Fireball. 
Uh, your dad's called Fireball, and this is your mom? Yep, Alicia. Because, you know, a lot of people, I'm sure, you know, they're always like, oh, his parents are Bigfoots. Keith was surprised to find out that I had a family that just wasn't, like, hatched out in the woods or something. This is... That's me is this crapping? That's me seasick. All right, I want to know about this puking. Am I going to be... Is this what I'm going to look like when we're crapping? Well, you can either do that, or you can take drowning meat and turn it into a zombie, but you won't puke. Okay, well, this is going to be interesting. Well, I can keep showing you pictures and telling you stories, or I can take you out and show you how I live. All right, well, let's go. Let's do it. All right, All right man, I'm ready. I'm fired up. <laughs> you can learn a lot going through a man's house, and I learned a lot about Bobo. Maybe too much. Coming up, Bobo shows me what he did for a living before finding Bigfoot. This is the back? That's right. So crabs really like smelly dead fish. Oh. It's like bacon to a Bigfoot. To get a final taste of Bobo's life before finding Bigfoot, he took me to the Woodley Island Marina. Bobo has spent a lot of his life as a crab fisherman. Keith definitely heard me talk about crabbing so much, like, man, I'm missing it. Let's not film during crab season. I want to go crab. Today, at the crack of dawn, we are going to catch us some crabs. The fishing boats are all tied up in Humboldt Bay, one of the best places to catch crabs in Northern California. So we're crabbing today. Yep. Just so you know, I don't even know what crabbing really means. You drop a pot, put bait in it, come back, pick it up, pull the crabs out. You're rich. Bobo's old buddy Jimbo is the skipper of the Roseanne. They go back a long way, and Jimbo's agreed to take us out. What's up, Jimbo? How's it going, Bobo? And I've known Bobo for about 20 years. Started fishing with me quite a few years ago. I never looked for Bigfoot with him, but <laughs> he's a good buddy of mine. This is Keith. Hey, Keith, nice to meet you. Hey, thanks for uh, taking me out and doing this. Yeah, we'll so give are you. So are you, were you his boss? Not really, I don't look at it like that. <laughs> yeah, he worked for me, but we're buddies. Am I your boss? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't see it that way either. Uh, no, you don't. Let's go, board up. Come on, monkey. I'm a little worried Bo is gonna push me off. <laughs> you gotta wear these, because water might get on you, here. Wait, I thought I signed up for a desk job here. Okay. Ah. We've got an early start so that we can catch high tide and motor out safely across the bay. Are we looking good, Bobo? Yeah, you got plenty of room. As Bobo's deckhand, it was pretty obvious he was going to put me to work. Uh, we knew this day would come that I'd be working for uh, Bobo here. I like it, a little roll reversal. <laughs> for Bobo, going crabbing was a huge part of his life for about 20 years. He loves squatching, but he really misses crabbing. When you pull up pots and have crabs, you get so psyched. I mean, it's not just the money, it's the whole thing. You put them in the right spot, you know, you got the right bait. Bobo and Jimbo spent five seasons together crabbing. As the newbie, I was in for it. We're gonna have like a little YouTube moment when I vomit. All right. So just put like, Three quarters of the way. Apparently, the job of a deckhand is to handle smelly guts and smelly fish heads. Ah. And hold the bait over the jar so it drips oh, in. So it drips in. Ah. Oh. I had Jimbo pull it out yesterday to thaw it so it smell extra rank for you. Thank you, Bobo. What have I done to you? I really wanted Keith to get the full real experience. I got him to clean out like three or four hundred jars, bait super fast, but there's no way. He could have never have done it. So crabs really like. Smelly dead fish. They do. This is like pizza. It's like bacon to a Bigfoot. With the bait jars finally filled, it was time to start setting out the pots. You ready? Yeah. All right. Oh, both, was... both. Oh, both. <laughs> now make sure your line doesn't snag. Now pull it out. We gotta hurry up. We gotta hurry up. Wow. That was pretty easy. I'm usually like when you got a new greenhorn, like you just bust it on the whole time. Like, dude, like, cause you gotta hurry, you gotta go fast. Okay, pick it up and throw it out flat. Oh, God. Okay. Ah. Ah. Perfect. Woohoo! You set up. Good job, Keith. All right. No more office job for you. All right, so now what? We just wait for the crowds to fill the pot. All right. Come back, pick them up, and get rich. All right. With some time to kill, I had a chance to ask Bobo an important question. Yeah, so do you prefer squatching... Like, if you said today I can either go crabbing or out by myself squatching. Uh, I'd probably take the squatching nowadays because it's a little easier. <laughs> Crabbing's what really did me in. 
So my ears were jacked, my shoulder and back was jacked. So the more that happened, the more I just started going squatching. All right, so we're ready to pull up the crab pots? You gotta be quick at this, shell pass. You reach in, grab it, throw it in, reach in, grab it, throw it in. So is this what you say is like the most work, this part right here? It's the most fun. All right. Is that you see if you caught anything or not? Why do you like crabbing so much? When you pull up the pot, yeah. each one of those crabs is like a $10 bill. Whoa! Ah, there's crabs! Whoa, oh my gosh! <laughs> Bobo's not afraid of Bigfoots, and he's definitely not afraid of some little crustaceans. You don't reach past the second leg. You grab their back legs, look them up. If you reach here, they can get you. Just grab them. Ah! Like God! Oh, God! Oh, it's alive! Oh, God! Grab them by the back. This is the back? That's the front. Grab That's right the here. Front. Grab right here. Grab these two. All right. Yeah, now yank them. Oh, no! Oh. Don't reach too far forward, he'll bite you. Oh, God! Don't reach that far forward, he's gonna get you. He's gonna... Bobo's telling me that I gotta go fast because they gotta make money, and I don't know which is the front or the back of the crab, and they're they're trying to attack my hands and pinch me, and it's it's totally stressful. Got him. Ah, easy. Ow! Don't reach past the second. You keep reaching too far up. Is this the back or the front? That's the size. This is the back. Yeah. Right? Grab his. <laughs> One more. Oh, wait. Oh, ow! He's on me. Oh, ow! Shoot! Oh my God! Ah! You think you get pinched once, you're gonna realize, don't go past the back two legs. I kept telling that, don't reach past the back two legs. And he kept just grabbing the whole thing, going, ow, ow. Okay, there it is. <laughs> Gee, you're a crabber. <laughs> Although I was pretty lousy at crabbing, Bobo was clearly a pro. So how much money would we make on this pot? Around? This pot, I think there was eight, so 40 bucks. Yeah, all right, we'll split it 20 and 20. Bobo told me that when he's done with finding Bigfoot, this is what he may go back and do. I don't blame him. I might join him.